Like many people, I've always been fascinated by the story of Vitol Pilecki, the man who volunteered to go into Auschwitz and survived 900 days of unbelievable hell, setting up the underground resistance and sending reports out to the outside world about the horror, the terror and the mass murder that was going on in the camp. Reports that were ignored. Now we are actually on the exact location today where Pilecki on the 19th of September 1940 was captured. But not only that, in an exclusive first ever, we're going to be talking to the little boy, Marek Ostrovsky, his nephew who was sitting opposite Pilecki when Pilecki allowed himself to be captured. What you're about to see has never been recorded on camera before and may never again. It is quite literally a moment of history. Panie Marku, pan był świadkiem tego niesamowitego, ważnego momentu, jak rotmistrz samej woli właściwie podał się Niemcom. Ta koncepcja pójścia do, do spada, zbadania oświęt, obozów Oświęcimiu, czy powstała wtedy, kiedy kilku przywódców tajnej armii polskiej w łapankach na mieście zostało yy, aresztowanych i wywiezionych na, właśnie do Oświęcimia. Za chwilę będzie spotkanie z panem Jackiem Fairweatherem, autorem książki i właściwie <grywanie> niedaleko Bardzo się cieszę na to spotkanie. I właściwie, jak pan wspomniał, drugi raz wróci pan do mieszkania po, po, po powstaniu. Czyli tak po jest. Ty, ty Spodziewam ty się, że to będzie przeżycie, bo pierwsze było bardzo silnym przeżyciem, emocjonalnym. Here he is, the man. Oh, nice to see you. <laughs> Jack Fairweather is the author of the best-selling book on Pilecki's life, The Volunteer, and he explains why Pilecki is on what would seem to most people like a complete suicide mission. Jack, can you tell us about the 19th of September 1940? What happened in the flat here? What happened with Marek and what was Vitor Pilecki trying to do? So Warsaw occupied by the Germans. News of a new concentration camp opened in, in south, the town of Oswinchim. The underground had asked Pilecki to get himself arrested, to get sent to the camp. And this is where it happened, on this street, in this apartment. Pilecki was waiting overnight for a German roundup. The streets were gonna be sealed. He was gonna get, gonna get arrested. Unlike most of my productions, I don't really need to speak because this is Marek's moment and he's sharing it with Jack, the author who's done more than most to bring Pilecki's story to the world. Ready? Right. <laughs> after you, after you. You are a guest, <laughs> because it quite... Okay. Right, the same sound as when the marching up, the echo. Jack and Marek start to explore Marek's childhood memories and indeed the dramatic events from this particular day, which Jack relates to us reading from his book, The Volunteer. Vito woke and dressed before dawn the following morning, September the 19th. He didn't have long to wait to hear the rumble of the trucks approaching. A few minutes later, there was a rap at the door. Eleonora, already dressed, opened it. The building caretaker, Jan Kiliansky, stood in the hallway, tense and fearful. The Germans are here, he announced. He recognized Vitold, but wasn't aware of his scheme. Hide in the basement if you want. Get out through the gardens at the back. Thank you, Jan, said Vitold. He retreated to the bedroom Eleonora shared with Marek. The boy was standing up in his crib, wide-eyed. They could hear bangs and crashes and the barking of German orders outside now. I remember that uh, Vitold comes to me uh, kiss me, my uh, front, uh, front uh, head. Marek's favorite teddy bear had fallen to the floor. Vitor stooped to pick it up and hand it to him. The boy was scared, but he knew he shouldn't cry. I uh, realized that if the Germany took somebody, it's a very bad situation. The door to their apartment building crashed open and footsteps rang up the concrete steps, followed by shouts and screams. Kelianski appeared at the doorway again. They're in the building, it's your last chance. Thank you, Jan, said Vitold again, and the caretaker was gone. 
There's the bang on the door, and this time it's not the caretaker. No, but not. And your your mum your your mum is the one who's opening the door. Each yeah, time. Oh, so she she she, she, the door. she moved uh, to, uh, from the from this from this room to the door. And a soldier barged in, brandishing his weapon. Up, up! He shouted. Vito had already had his jacket on. Instead of making a run for it, he calmly walked towards the man. Under his breath, he whispered to Eleonora, report back, the order is done. For most Polish people, Witold Pilecki is the greatest hero the country has ever had. But to Marek Ostrowski, he was family. I remember you described how he would put a bin on his head and yeah. chase you around this apartment. Right? Yeah, that right. was, you know, he, 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 he liked to play with me. For, for me, it was a really, really good day when he came here and played with me. Well, it's been a day of emotion. I'm not gonna lie, coming here to film today's episode, I was quite literally shaking with nerves because we have watched a little slice of history and we've captured that moment. Thank you for watching this episode. If you've liked it, then I encourage you to share it with anyone you think might be interested in this story. And I also encourage you to watch many of the other fascinating stories that we've been telling throughout the course of the last year on the Heart of Poland show. So I'll see you again for another episode of Heart of Poland.